Good morning. Today is May 9th, 2021. It's a um, Christian Family Sunday, but traditionally known as Mother's Day Sunday. I just recognize tulips in our sanctuary, which, is, which are from uh, the Garden of Joe Rain. Thank you, Joe. I'd like to welcome Raya to come to read and light the Christ candle. On this Christian Family Sunday, we are called to celebrate relationships, mothers, grandmothers, and all, all those of every gender who nurture us. Our God is a God of relationships. He seeks us out and longs for us to connect with others and with all of creation. Let us gather in the light of Christ to celebrate all of the loving relationships that shape and bless our lives. Mothering is not confined to women. Many of us have been mothered by others who are not childbearing people. Mother Earth is our home and nurturing sustainer. Let us honor and care for her with respect. Mother Spirit expresses through us tending, protecting, and nourishing those who cannot fend for themselves, whatever the reason. While the Church gathers these our souls in different ways through our community of faith. Mother God invites us into relationship with each other, to know one another as siblings and cousins, as family committed to care for each other. Today we celebrate belonging to all these mothers' families, one earth, one people, one love. Let us worship.
opening prayer. Today, gracious God, we think especially of what family and home mean to us and how important it is to each of us to have a place where we are welcomed and accepted. We are grateful to you for the invitation you have extended to each of us to make our home with you and that no one will be refused entry into your family, that each of us is acceptable just as we are. To you, gracious God, who has welcomed us unconditionally, we give our thanks today. Amen. The scripture today is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who has been born, everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them, and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loves us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister, is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God.
In English, the I, the word I, the first singular person represent a person or an individual. It is I that seem to always be the first thing to be considered in this world. I may be wrong, but that is my observation for the past 28 years in, here in Canada. I have to stand by myself. I am who I am. These kind of notions are quite emphasized in a daily life. My right, my privacy, seems to be more important than public safety and else. But in Korea and my home, home country, in the Korean culture, Koreans more use the words like we, our, and ours than the words I, my, mine. If I introduce my mother to you, for example, I would say, if I interpret it directly, I would say, this is our mother. It is logically and grammatically incorrect, but that is the way of life and speaking in Korea. And sometimes it, really con it is really confusing if I introduce my wife, our, our, our wife. <laughs> but it happens sometimes, but that's the way of speaking. During my theological years in Halifax, that time if I speak in, in class, I thought in Korean first and translated it into English before speaking, but not today. I said, our father said to me when I was young, and then blah, blah, blah. The professor and colleagues were confused at my presentation, and one of them responded to me, Sangmin, when you said, our father, were you talking about your earthly father or our father in heaven? My point is that Koreans and the Korean culture in general consider family and community as important as each individual. The shape of a person in Chinese is like this. It, it looks like two individuals or two eyes, you know, lean on together. It represents not I, but we stand together equally and interdependently. I'm not saying, I'm not claiming that one culture is better than the other. Because there's always some pros and cons in each culture. We gathered here today to observe as Christian Family Sunday, which is traditionally known as Mother's Day Sunday. Our opening hymn, Voices United, number 270, Dear Mother God, reminds us of who we are and where we come from. Here, God is described as a loving and caring mother. And remember, we all are born from such image of God. St. Paul describes Christian family as one body. The first Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27, now you are Christ's body and individually members of it. 
For even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Children grow basic, based on the love and, and sacrifice of their parents. They also grow, get married, have children, and give their love and sacrifice for their children. And that is the cycle of life and the secret of love. I watched a food channel recently. In the program, a chef dared to say, food is love. I agree with him. Do you? Food is love. I, I grew up with three other brothers. All were trained in Taekwondo, Korean martial art, and obtained black belts in their early ages. We argued, we wrestled with each other, and we played games and sports together, and quite often with fists and kicks. As an adult, each has his own family, and we know we love each other and support one another, though I am the only one to live away from them. Why? I wondered. For we shared meals prepared by our mother thousand, thousand times as a family. Yes, we ate the love of mother together while growing up. The mother is gone, but the memory of her love and the food she cooked for her children is now part of me and my brothers. How could we not keep loving from each other. Today's reading defines God as love. God is love. It is mentioned twice. Do you agree if I say mother is love? Yes, right, yep. Do you agree if I say God is food? No? <laughs> You know the three, uh, three point thesis. If A is B and B is C, A is C. Right? If God is love and, and love is food, and then God is food. If you agree with me, please practice it. Whenever you have breakfast, lunch, dinner, alone sometimes, with your family members, friends or neighbor, say grace like this. God is good, God is love, and God is food. Thanks be to God. But food is the reality of love. Yes. One of the significant missions and ministry of Jesus is sharing food, sharing meal with his family members, friends, disciples, neighbors, 5,000 people, and sometimes 7,000 people. Sharing meal is one of important ministries here at St. John's United Church, too. For the past 14 Months, we have been missing full communion with all people of God. Fellowship with sweet goodies right after Sunday service. Monthly Thursday morning breakfast 
proscenium, UCW spring and fall luncheons, Shrove Tuesday pancake dinner, and summer community potato pancake event. I predict we would be missing it again this summer. Some of our church members, mostly from Mission and Outreach Committee, are engaged in offering meals to out of cold in winter time with the benevolent fund St. John's never let people in need go hungry and empty. St. John's Alliston Foundation present financial food for those for education and communities in need. St. John's has been playing in the role of the mother for the community and many, the love of God and food of God for many families and beyond, even in this global pandemic. Why? No reason to explain because we are a family. We, particularly the church family, are founded based on the love of God and the sacrifice of God's Son. Amen and amen. We will have another song. It's a little bit embarrassing for me to uh, mention uh, the, the reality of financial part of St. John's United Church, but I, like, I have to say, uh, we, we've been uh, fall short, the financial part, uh, this year, so I, I hope you are aware of it and support your church uh, financially. Let us join me uh, in opening prayer. Let us pray in unison. Generous God, you invite us to give you gifts from the abundance that we have received from you. We know that these offerings may be transformed by you into precious gifts in the same way that the dandelion we brought to our mothers became priceless bouquets. Amen. Let's close our gathering with the hymn we gather here to bid farewell.
as you live this time of fellowship and worship, may you find rest, spiritual renewal, and peace as you spend time with those you love, doing what you love, resting in God's grace as we celebrate the remainder of this day, the Sabbath known as Christian Family Sunday. Amen. Great. Uh, just, I just remind you 